The names of Eugene de Kock, Dirk Kutsia and Joe Mamasela have become household names in South Africa the last few years. So has the name Flakplas, the farm where these efficient killers had their base. The secret of the so-called success of the Flakplas death squad was the use of a group of men and women called Askaris. Let's meet some of them. I was forced to kill my own people, the people that I devoted my life into liberating. We, we believed in what we were doing as killers. We were seeing it as a war situation. Our job was to hunt uh, cadres, either PAC or ANC, and we killed them. If uh, we think they are useless, we kill them. But if we think we can arrest them, we can arrest them and change them to Ascaris. There was torture at, on daily basis. There was killings on daily basis. We, we just turned into political serial killers. We had no respect for human life. And uh, our commanders had absolutely no respect for our lives. I didn't know anything. They never said to me, you are going to kill people, you are going to steal cars, you are going to kidnap and all those. They never said those things. We were above the law. I mean, we were untouchable. Uh, we had the, the, the backing of the upper echelons in the police and the politicians. So we were above the law. The dramatic successes of the police anti-terrorist unit in Namibia, codenamed Gufu, led the South African security police to borrow some of their methods. Among Kufu's most efficient killers were Swapo guerrillas who were caught and compromised, then forced to fight their own comrades. Security Police Section C1 was born. Three of the most hardened South African policemen became its commanders between 1979 and 1993. Dirk Johannes Kutzier, convicted killer and amnesty applicant. Jack Johannes Jacobus Cronier, Amnesty applicant for numerous cases. Eugene Alexander de Kock, 212 years jail sentence for murder and fraud. The nerve center of these men's death commando was this beautiful scenic 44 hectare farm outside Pretoria, Flag Plus. The secret of the success of this unit was the Kufut recipe, but at Flag Plus they were called Ascaris. It was ANC cadres that infiltrated the country on operations that were caught by the police, by the security police. Then they had the, the difficult option out of facing court cases and long interrogation, third, uh, third degree methods used, electrical shocks, uh, smothering with a wet uh, bag over the head, uh, or decide to work for the uh, security police with benefits like a, a, a proper pay uh, and a luxury life on, on Flak Plus. So it's obvious it's human that you would choose the easy way out. In my opinion, an Askari is a racist derogatory terms because it used to denote only um, captured ANC, PAC cadres who attend to become South African police, but only black ones. There came this guy uh, in the name of Eugene Tikok. The one who told me first there are two things in this world. It's either you cooperate or you die. Then he took out his, uh, uh, his pistol, it was a parapellum, because I know we call them trained. It was a parapellum. He cocked it, he shot one shot on the air. Then he put it here next to me on my head and then said to me, You stay here, you work, or you, you remain here. What do you say? Then I could see really these guys are also drunk, you know, and he already shot one shot on, uh, on the air, and then the next one is coming to me. That's what he said. To me. Then I couldn't do otherwise. I had to say, okay, guys, I'll cooperate. They were recruited after being kidnapped. They were given a lot of false information, all those promising houses, money, all those things. And uh, some came on their own. They talk of uh, 
they were eating rats and snakes in exile and there's a lot of tribalism there, ANC fights amongst each other and all those. They talk a lot of bad things about ANC. Flak flas and the Askaris did become the main instrument in the killings in the, in the 1980s and early 1990s, yes. With the Menenge killing, I mean, I couldn't walk as a white man into a black township and I would stand out like a sore finger. So you need black guys to cooperate and do the job for you, act as instrument for you. So you, so you did, in, depending on the, on, on the situation and the circumstances, you need a guy who was black, you need a guy who could speak the local language, you need a guy to, 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 to throw out uh, as a front runner to go and prepare the way and speak to search for your specific target in a way that no one would would suspect any any anything funny. Uh, Flock Plus, in my opinion, was a living hell on earth. Uh, there was torture at, on daily basis. There was killings on daily basis. The the worst part of it is that uh, one couldn't get out of it. You would just just disappear like. Is Myanmar is no more there. We don't know where he is. Uh, many other people that were being in flag plus, they just disappear if you ask, if you pose the threat to the security risk, you're gone. We had other two guys who uh, were from Natal. They escaped to Swaziland. And then we were given a mission to go and hunt them down. We were given false passport. A car. Uh, with a uh, hideout uh, compartment to hide uh, the weapons which we're going to use there. And then they went in, we followed them. Tikok um, and uh, other people, Pinar for, from Petritiv, they went in and then, actually we went in, they followed us. And then there was a certain informer of uh, Pinar of Petritiv. Uh, he showed us the place where the guys were. We went them, we went inside. Our order was not to bring them alive, it was to shoot them. We shoot and kill them. Right in Swaziland. Askaris, we never policemen. We never went to Hamaskara. Askaris, we political animals. We, our main crime was we carried our revolutionary instructions to the letter. And in the process, some of us, we fell. Human rights lawyer and United Democratic Front activist Griffiths Mtenge was killed by three Askaris, Amon Nofomela, David Chikalanga, and the late Brian Nolunga. Dirk Kutsie and David Chikalanga were convicted for the killing. Both have been granted amnesty. The intention was not to kill him brutally. It was to make the whole thing appear. It was to simulate robbery. But unfortunately, in the scene of crime, certain things develop that you don't expect. Yeah, Mkenge's physical strength was under, you know, it was undermined. But uh, when he was stopped, he stood up and he fought. It was a, it was a life and death struggle. It was not as if people were there and they killed Mkenge and Mkenge just lie there. He was chasing us around with our knives. And it was, you know, it was like a, a pack of hungry wolves, you know, attacking a prey, and the prey was fighting back. One of the most notorious Askaris was Glory September Sidibe. He aided the flag blast operatives in capturing and killing MK Kaders from Swaziland. I didn't know by then this actual name that is Glory Sidibe. I know him by his MK name, September. It's a, pers a person that we have kidnapped in Swaziland, in, near Matsapa. It's in the vicinity of Manzini. One person who uh, fell victim to Glory uh, Sidibe selling out was Ishmael Ibrahim, an ANC political military committee chairman at the time, based in Swaziland, where Sidibe was abducted. No, the NIS kidnapped me from Swaziland and they handed me over to the South African Security Police. So my interrogators were members of the South African Police. During one period, I remember they brought in an Askari by the name of Gloria Sedibe. Uh, it was not an interrogating uh, session. They just brought him there to, uh, to show me that, yeah, one of your ANC person has now 
decided to work for the South African police. And they said, look at him, he's quite happy working for the South African police and he has no problem. But this person was uh, kidnapped from Swaziland six months before I was kidnapped. And uh, the very next day or a day, or a day or two later, the South African police raided a number of homes in Swaziland and Sadiba was with them. The existence of Flag Plus was exposed by Ter Kutsier and Almond Nofomela in a Freie Vierkblatt interview in November 1989. It was met with flat denials by generals and police officers. These lies were repeated under oath to the Harams Commission of Inquiry into state death squads. Certain operations over the border, especially Flag Plus was only disbanded in 1993. Yeah. Even at the and Truth Commission the hearings, the apartheid politicians yeah. were denying responsibility for this unit. I was at no stage aware of any unit carrying out assassinations. The Flag Plus unit, as it was explained to me, had a totally different a totally different objective, a totally different field of activity. I was never part, as I've said, of any decision to assassinate or murder anybody. I totally distanced myself from assassination. Even in the fight which we had, assassination is wrong, and I would never have supported it. And if I had any inclination, any indication that there were actually people committing assassinations and that there was a unit which was used for that, I would have acted violently myself. Flock used to come there, Commissioner van der Merve used to come there, Creel used to come there, NS Creel used to come there, Flock Plus. A lot of ministers used to come there. Here is the place which they then later built where the ministers and Basi Smith and them bribed had their uh, Shiva's legal whiskey, congratulated the guys where the poiki course was made. You can see big fireplaces. And if you have all the liquor and the meat that was absorbed here, yeah, you can open a bottle store and a butchery for the rest of your life. I can assure you that. It seems as if the road to truth has finally arrived for many Askaris who have led secret lives for the past decade. And maybe yet another journey towards forgiveness and reconciliation will unfold. To me it feels as if uh, the world have just closed the doors for me because I've got no way now. No self-respecting human being can feel happy for killing even one person. Now if we talk about 30, you will know how I feel. It's terrible. It's a dastardly act. It's something that one cannot forgive himself for, for doing. But under those circumstances, one could not do anything. I really regret what happened to me. I really regret it. As a result, I want to, uh, to apologize to the nation as well. That what we did, we were all forced to do it. We didn't do it willingly, we were forced to do it. So the nation must understand what happened to us. The Truth Commission can, according to the Act of Parliament that governs them, investigate the